this episode of Tech Foolery, we talk about how the PlayStation Network should be changing its name to the POS Network, Amazon's cloud services go down for a ton of websites, and why you shouldn't panic over Apple's location tracking services. Also, we give our thoughts on the Wii 2 and Sony's uh, not so exciting tablets. And uh, the uh, first round results and second round of uh, voting for the Technodome. Ah, Technodome. <laughs> yeah, uh, another Ask Steve and another entry in the uh, Museum of Mobile Art. It's tech foolery, so don't click away. If you are a longtime viewer of all three of our episodes, welcome back. If you're a first time viewer, just simply welcome. Welcome. It's nice to have you. Yeah. I'm your host, Ashley Eskeva, and joining me as always, my trusty sidekick, Mike Hobbs. Hi. What's up, Mike? Oh, not much. Wait, yes, I'm fine. Well, yeah. There's been a lot of nerd rage this week. Mm, some of it is misplaced, I would have to I would yeah, argue. Yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to talk know. about that. But um, a lot of outages. This has been like the week of the outage on the internet. People will look back and call this the week of outages. Week of outages. Very bad. Let's start off with obviously the hugest outage the maybe in the history of, of uh, anything. Of outages. Of, 77 uh, million users affected. Of course, we're talking about the PlayStation Network. Unbelievable. Good luck if you want to play Portal and keep your achievements. I mean, it went down when this was last week. It went down. Yeah. First day, you're like, oh, this maybe this can happen. Yeah. Second day goes by, well, we're getting a little bit weird. Sony Third, has said nothing. Sony has said nothing. Third day, okay, what's Panic going on is here? Panic starting to set People in. People are freaking, starting to freak out. And it's not until, what, six days later? Yeah, six Sony days finally, later. Sony finally releases an official statement. They're yeah. saying 77 million users' personal information compromised, including your email address, your location, your, your pa password. Your, the, your password and your password hint. I mean, this is insane, especially with the password stuff. They're like, oh, our passwords are text, are just stored in plain text. Yeah, uh, it's hard to we believe. We don't encrypt our passwords. What? Why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you take that step? Is it just out of laziness or incompetence? For a company the size and scope of Sony. I mean, they, they know they're going to get tens of millions of subscribers on this thing, and they're all going to have their personal information. Yeah. You would think security would be... I mean, at the top of their list. Ridiculous. Some dastardly person. Or some dastardly person looking to steal my credit card info. Or give it to other people. Yeah. Right. Or sell it. Or, I don't know, just make them look bad. Who knows? Bad. Who yeah, knows maybe, what... maybe they got a vendetta against Sony. Which maybe, they they certainly... got, maybe they got blacklisted during the Call of Duty Black Ops bannings. Well, and if they wanted to make Sony look bad, they sure did. Yeah, the really bad. Uh, the class action lawsuits have already started. And um, honestly, just, I mean, it just looks really bad for Sony. And Sony's reaction has been really poor. Really, really slow poor, to respond. Slow to respond. And even then, like all week, they were like, the PlayStation Network is still undergoing maintenance. We'll have more answers for you shortly. That's <laughs> right. it. Right. Well, yeah, no indication that you might should be concerned that maybe about you your should information. Change your passwords. Yeah. And so, you guys, if you are out there and you have any passwords on the internet that are the same email and password combination as what you use for the PlayStation Network, please go take a minute, pause the show, go change your passwords. And three days later, when you're done doing that, like me, <laughs> You can come back to the show and finish watching it. Amazon, one of their major data centers, which I think is in the south, mm -hmm. uh, went down because of a network glitch that was causing the servers to constantly make backups of the data. So it overloaded the server. It maxed out the capacity and then started causing all kinds of problems. It took down lots of different services. Oh, big ones. Like, I mean, Fiora, what? Yeah. Hootsuite, Foursquare. Reddit. Reddit. I mean, that's huge. Pocket Legends, also yeah. a game on, on, you know, Android and iOS. They're down. Right. I mean, they went down. This is, a, this is probably the worst outage in cloud computing history. It sort of speaks to the risk of mm. having everything stored in the cloud. And if your software is reliant on the network, sometimes you're just not going to be able to use it when these things yeah. happen. And that's really frustrating. And you know, it makes you think twice about uh, having every single thing in the cloud, even though it does have its benefits. Yeah. Imagine if this had been an outage and then erased. Everything. Or if it had gone for a week and they didn't say anything. Yeah, and then or, you if, come back. or if they were like some other company whose names <laughs> rhyme with Sony. And they, you know, mm -hmm. they come back and we're like, oh, you know, it's just down. We'll, we'll give you more information in six days. That's baloney. <laughs> it is baloney. I agree. It's a bunch of 
Sony I don't baloney. know. Malarkey. Sony yeah. baloney. Sony baloney. I like it. It's a bunch of Sony baloney. That's one of our new catchphrases. <laughs> Sorry, We're trademarking yeah. that right now. That sucks. So obviously Apple, big deal this week with the this this furor over location tracking. Tracking everyone. Everyone who has an iPhone or an iPad, they're tracking their location. It was the, sort of what I think the general population was thinking. Was thinking. They, they, they think it's a GPS tracker that basically anywhere you have your iPad, they can pinpoint the exact location that right. you're in. And but that, the reality And of that the they're taking this information and, you know, and giving it to people it, to advertisers yeah, or something. Yeah, or like, you know, giving it to your ex-wife or something. You right, know, like right. For some keeping price, close tabs on you. That's just absolutely it's not what they're doing. Ridiculous. They don't have least. time for that. It doesn't keep track of your phone, it just keeps track of those locations what of those things. To. What it connects when it, whenever to. Whenever it connects to a cell phone tower or a Wi-Fi connection, it's recorded in a local file. Right. This file is not broadcast to Apple. Like, it doesn't send no. it to Apple every night. It this does is not. Like, people are freaking out. They think this is like every night, your location, everything no. you've done for the day goes to Apple, and some, some guy in a room is like tracking your every move, making a little I mean, map. With pins on it, trying to you know decide when to kill you and you know snatch you in the park. It's no. outrageous. It's People outrageous. need to calm down. Yeah, that's correct. It's just uh, they're not and, and it, there's this lo local version stored on your computer, but it doesn't go anywhere. They claim that's a bug that they will fix in a in a very uh, up in a in a very soon. They'll fix it soon as in soon very, as they get uh, all their information from you. <laughs> yeah. So I think I mean it, that's fine. It's a tempest in a teacup. It's nothing. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. The white iPhone. It's here. Oh man, it's here. It has arrived. For whatever reason, it took a, almost a year yeah. from the original announcement of the black. This, is, this has literally gotten to Bigfoot proportions. Like Seriously. this has become a, a, an urban legend. Almost. Right, the white iPhone. And then, um, I mean, it was announced along the side the black one at the yeah, same time. It's been almost a year. It's going to be coming, folks, and it just never showed up. Never showed up for, and the you know the reasons are the rumors are many as to why. Very many. Light they, leak. Light leak. They couldn't get Aging the color right. The, color, yeah, the white was chipping stuff. off all this yeah. stuff. So, but anyway, they've, whatever it took, they've mastered the manufacturing of the white iPhone. Yeah, and but a, and apparently it's 0.2 millimeters thicker than the black iPhone. I had not heard this detail, really. Yeah, and it, you can. It's a really tight fit on a standard iPhone case. Fascinating. So yeah. the paint is was hardly what it was. How do I? Light so. leak around the lens. Yeah, something like that. Boy. This. But it's it's just it's a hair thicker than the 0.2 original millimeters. iPhone 4. There you go. Special Crazy stuff. Okay, so Nintendo has officially announced that we are going to see a playable successor to the Wii yes. at E3 this year. So, in, And I will be there. So we're, we're going to give you the hands-on. I'm going to be like, look, this thing is amazing, or I'm going to say, look, this thing sucks. So here's the deal. Mm -hmm. The Wii 2, or the Wii Wii, or Wii Squared. Or the Wii HDS, whatever the crap, it. Whatever the crap they're going to call it. The Wii HD? Hopefully not the Wii Stream. HD Wii? Hopefully not the Wii Stream. Yeah, that would be weird. But, I mean, the screen stream is what I think they're calling one of the features, but we'll talk about screen that. Screen stream. In a minute. I can't. I'm never going to get that right. In a moment. So here's the deal. It's supposed to be HD, no 3D. Obviously HD. I think 1080p they're promising. Yeah, 1080p they're, they're shooting for. Um, th this whole thing is supposed to be released in 2012. Right. So Mike was actually saying earlier, not really sure what they're going to do with the holiday season. Just push 3DS, I, I guess. guess, and then uh, maybe a cheap Wii system, mm -hmm, uh, discounted Wii. So yeah, yeah uh, we're going to be but, able to see it at E3. But the rumor is that the, the this controller is just effing insane. That the controller will have a six and a half inch screen on it. Like imagine a, ga a GameCube controller with a six and a half inch screen, like bigger than this. Right. But it's going to be a screen. With it, I mean, that's insanity. So it'll be like a gigantic DS. Your TV yeah. will be the top screen, and then you'll the bottom screen where you'd have like information and you can interact with so it. So let's it's say your you're playing Mario Kart, and you're you're seeing well, and they're also saying that you might be able to see like your individual multiplayer. Car. Multiplayer, you see your individual screen on the on the screen right. there. It's like a portable system yeah. for the couch. Nintendo. Uh, it's, 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 I don't know. I don't know about this. It's innovative. I'm sure. It's innovative, I but have, weird. Yeah, but I have faith in Nintendo that they will have good gameplay concepts behind it because yeah. they tend not to just throw things out they like that. They tend to make things fun. They, they, they do tend to they make They put an emphasis on this more so than I think any other game maker, and that I think separates yeah. them and should bode well for the system. We'll see. It might be. It might cost more, and I can't imagine. They're how, saying like, what is it, three to three, four hundred dollars? I, I would imagine two ninety nine, and then I'm gonna say three ninety nine. No way. With, the, it, no, with two controllers. I'm just, there's no way Nintendo. They're saying those controllers are gonna cost. $100 a piece. Well, nobody said that's just speculation, but I can't imagine how it would be much cheaper than that with a six inch screen of any quality. That's true. With a $100 controller. And it can't come with more than one. It would be, I can't imagine how they could afford that. Well, the, so, Wii, the Wii only came with, didn't the Wii come with two? No, it came with one. Oh, it came with one. And the nunchuck. I spent a lot of money. And those things Wii. still, they cost like 40 bucks on their own. Yeah. So. Can, can I just say really quickly controllers mm. for consoles are absolutely freaking insane? Sony goes crazy on these. 60 bucks for a Sony controller for a PS3. It's a game. I can either buy Portal 2 or I can buy a controller. <laughs> Which and, play, may... and, and play no games. 
Yeah. Like you just sit I there with a friend and be like, well, I'm sorry. I wish I could have had a game, but I had to choose. This is my week of disappointment in Sony. And yeah. that's what I'm going to call it. It's not really the week of outages yeah, for me. Okay. It's just the week of like, right, the so I am so disappointed in Sony. How much could they suck more? Uh, yeah, and from um, and many different levels. Just, I mean, sad. So they unveiled these two new tablets. Uh, the first one is slightly promising. It's the S1. Mm -hmm. This uh, is just a like a more like standard honeycomb stand tablet. But it has this weird sort of magazine fold design in the back. Like it, it Part of it bulges thing out. Where, yeah, it bulges out. So so it's got a little bit of weight to it on this side so that you don't feel heavy when you're only holding it with one I hand. I say it feels like holding a, a folded magazine. Yeah, like a folded magazine. Yeah. So, which is bizarre. Uh, but I'm fine with that. Too. I'm yeah, fine with, in, you know, different, slightly different form okay, factors. Okay, form factors Go for fine. it. How are you going to put in a case? I don't know. Um, but... It's a slate, and it's 9.4 inches. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, just, you know, standard Tegra 2. Android tablet-based, a honeycomb, Tegra 2. Oh, and it'll be certified for PlayStation Suite. So you'll be able to buy PlayStation Suite. Which is, all stuff. so far, still not seeming that great. Why PlayStation Suite? Why don't they have PS2 Suite? And then they keep showing, like, Crash Bandicoot, which was great at the in time. In 97. But, geez, I mean. It was great in 1997. Is that really that compelling you know, of a You know, 13 years ago, game. it was a great game. And iPad games like Infinity Blade look far better than any PlayStation game that you can put out. Yeah, that's kind of true. Then you got the S2. Clamshell. It's a clamshell. It's a dual screen tablet that's 5.5 inches. And when this guy holds this thing in his hand, mm. it looks ridiculous. It is thick, number one. And number two, it's about this big. Yeah, it's like a big hot dog. No, so, it's not okay, really so widescreen. it opens up, so it's a dual screen. Um, I don't know if you'd call it a tablet. A clamshell tablet? Tools, which a I mean, clamlet? and you know, as we were talking about, a there clamlet. are there are use cases for dual screens. Like imagine if you could have a, uh, your email in the bottom yeah. window, a and separate then, browser in the top, do yeah, two yeah, different yeah. apps. Yeah, two different things at one time, but no. It doesn't it's really work like that. the same concept as the Echo, which is also a piece of crap. It's just like one or two custom apps. You have to freeze one thing to use another app. Yeah. Like and you can well, have two apps up, but you have to freeze one to use the other. I mean, it's just... And Sony has a custom email for the S2 where you'll have like the keyboard and that on the bottom screen. Which is just terrible. The thing on the top screen, which is fine, but... Why really, are you going to use Sony's email service? Well, not their service, but just their uh, viewer. I, I mean, whatever, it's just whatever. stupid. Their email client. And again... How is this ever going to get updated off of Honeycomb? If it's a Honeycomb tablet... It's not, tablet, and you're not going to get any developers supporting dual no, screens in any real way, except never. maybe Sony. Except Sony. I mean, why? Why? I don't I know. I don't know. I mean, the PlayStation certification really doesn't mean anything because it's just a generic tab. It doesn't have controls on it, it's so it's not sad. different than anything else. Just no. Sony... Just don't make it. They could, I mean, favor, here's what they could, oh, listen, what Sony could do to separate themselves is make something that's competitive, you know, in terms of the price of the iPad, and it's just a beautiful piece of hardware that yeah. feels so, like something special like they used I to be able to build, happen. that feels different and, you know, new, but it's just, I don't know what they're doing with it. It's time. Time for what? The Technodome! Oh! It is time for the Technodome, where 16 tech combatants go head-to-head -head in a battle for technology supremacy. Mm. We already had round one. The votes are in, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the big board. If you haven't seen it before, it's ginormous. Okay, so our first round of the Technodome. On the pop culture side, we had Stephen Colbert versus G4's Morgan Webb. Yep. And on, on the, the Tech Titan side... We had Steve Jobs here, and he went up against uh, Mr. Andrew D. Rubin, Andy Rubin of uh, Google. The votes were in, the but polls were closed. But before we get to who moves forward, yeah. we have some terrible, disturbing developments. It's true. With two of our combatants. It's true. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Reggie Filsami has been abducted by space pirates. Reggie, we barely knew ye. Samus Aran, who's on the pop culture side, works for Nintendo, and she actually had to go and get Reggie Filsimi because she is the only human being in existence with experience fighting space pirates. So Samus, also not available anymore. But dispatch to get Re Reggie. Hopefully we'll find out what happens to them. Hopefully we'll find out. Hopefully uh, comes good back. Luck. Good luck, Samus. Yep. But uh, we have two new combatants this week. This is awesome. I'll give you this one. Okay. On the pop culture side, we have the creative director of Polaroid, Lady Gaga. 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 She is going to go up against Miyamoto in round three, which is in next episode. For Tech Titans, we, we have, have a very special guest. The, uh, who has agreed. He, we, it took a while. It did take a while. So, but that's why he wasn't there right away. But it all worked out for the best because of Reggie's kidnapping. And we have Mark Zuckerberg, the, the Zuck. founder and CEO of the Face Tubes. Right here. I like this news. 
So founder and he'll be going against you. Founder of FaceTube is going to be going up against me in a uh, battle of uh, I don't know what, but it's going to be battle of wits. We'll see who wins a that. Battle of likes. I really can't predict it, but uh, I'm training. I'm in training as we speak. Yeah, Mike's been Mike's been working out real hard. I've been All running, right, running on the power pad. So let's talk about who wins our round one. Okay, why don't you go first? Well, this was actually a really close. This was really close. Yeah. And then suddenly, a couple of Something key tweeters right. caused this battle. One person pulled ahead of the other. Mm -hmm. Last minute. It was, a, it was a close fight. But in the end, Morgan Webb is moving on to the next so round. In the end, the pretty lady won out. Of course. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Steve. Oh, no. Stephen Colbert. Colbert. Should we get rid of him or should we leave him there? Oh, that's a good question. I Let's leave him. Leave Let's him leave him there. there. All right. Morgan Webb, congratulations. You are a goddess amongst geeks. Who won on that side? Well, this the results here were interesting and horrific. Andy Rubin in this poll for, I don't know, blew out Steve Jobs. Un okay. For unknown reasons. Yeah, like 10 to 1 or something. Yeah, really, the votes were like 9 to 1. It was pretty sad. It's completely skewed and unrealistic, and I would dispute this result if it wasn't just so blatant. But obviously what's happened here is Ashley's uh, Android... Uh, My cronies. Cronies. My minions. Sorry to point. And I had all these dolls vote All of her followers times. and fans piled on Andy Rubin, and Steve didn't have a chance in this. I feel awful about it, but here he goes. Andy Rubin, this is the illegitimate result, but I'm putting it in here anyway. This is like George Bush in uh, 2000, so there you go. <laughs> I see. Round two is the next two weeks. Yeah. And we've got great, we've got a great matchup this for round great. two on this the Tech Titan side. This is side. awesome, yeah. The other Steve, Balmer, the scary one, is going to go up against uh, good old Waz. Good old happy Waz. Original co-founder of, of Apple and uh, uh, outspoken uh, tech pundit. Guru. Yes. So we shall see who wins, Waz or Steve Ballmer. You can vote online at techfoolery.tv. You can check out our voting. It'll be right under the show. I just can't imagine week. how this guy could win this. Nobody likes well, that. on this side, I'm up. It's time for me yeah, to fight. Finally. And it, I'm fighting against one of my gaming idols. A hero. We're fighting a the hero. The man who brought us Grim Fandango, Psychonauts. Mm, your favorite. And Monkey Island. Yeah. Very serious. Tim Schafer. Tim Schafer. Brutal legend. Mm. I mean, this guy, Costume Quest. Oh, great, yeah. He's a genius, yeah. basically, and I admire him greatly. Great game writer, game designer. <sighs> Amazing. Great game writer. I mean, mm. the writing is my favorite. Going up against me with my best Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite face. This is going to be an interesting matchup because if Tim tweets about this, I could lose. So you guys, I'm counting on you guys to get out the vote, please, because I would hate to lose in the first round. I want to go up against Webb. I want to go up against Webb oh, so bad. Oh, a great taste battle. Yeah, it. That'd be a great, great battle. Huh? Geek ladies fighting the fight. All right. So that is round one. Morgan Webb. Moving on. With Andy Rubin. With Andy Rubin. On to the quarterfinals. Is that, is that what it is? The Techno Dome. Yeah, Quarter quarters. Finals? Semis and then finals will be two. I don't know how that works. Okay. There can only be one though. There right. can only be one. Oh boy, exciting. So that's the techno dome. Kids get vote. Go to, vote the, early. go to the site and vote. Vote often. Yep. Vote, vote happily. Fraudulently. Fraudulently. However you vote, if you just can. vote. You know, we have an advice columnist here at Tech Foolery. Do we? Yeah. Oh, good old Steve. Steve. Good old Steve, yeah. from Phonicus Maximus. Oh, strange. He asks Steve, uh, Dear Steve, so I heard that you finally got those white iPhones in production. Just talking about that. But would you please explain how it fits into your character to create something so bright since you're so evil? Dear Phonicus, you know, I take a very hands-on approach to every white iPhone 4's creation. They're made with the very finest baby unicorn powder. I personally club and grind up each and every baby unicorn lovingly because I know the end product will be an iPhone painted in genuine unicorn white. Why do you think I had to take a leave of absence? Those things are tough to find. So the next time you consider me evil, think about how much I love my user base and what I go through to give them a magical device. Love, Steve. Wow, that's something I did not know about Apple. Yeah, it's interesting. Real interesting. That's Makes the white iPhone all the more special. And he gets his hands dirty. Yeah, he yeah. gets in there and helps. Yeah. He's, he's helping. That's why he's terrific. You too can submit a question to Steve. You can email us at thetechfooleryshow at gmail.com or you can go to our website, techfoolery.tv, 
and you can click on the Ask Steve button and there will be a form for you to fill out and send off to Steve. Yep. Thanks, Steve. Mike, we also have another um, submitting mm. segment of the show. This is the Museum of Mobile Art. Mm. We actually got a really cool picture this week. I really liked last week's picture. Oh, yes, that was the... Uh the Peace Arch. The, the Peace Arch, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in Canada. Thank goodness for our editors because I didn't know anything about it. No, our crack, our staff of researchers got all that info. Our crack team of researchers looked it all up and made sure you guys actually learned something about it. And you'll probably get the same thing this week because we're idiots. We have a picture from Josh Melling from the Big Island of Hawaii. Yes. Aloha, Josh. Hawaii. -e. That's Hawaii. Two eyes, yeah. Hawaii. -e. Hawaii. -e. He took a picture of this as octo coral. Yeah. That's what he said. He says octo coral. Doesn't look like an octopus to me. No, no, no. But this is made up of a bunch of dead octopuses. Octopi. Are you sure? Yep. Well, it does. They made a little, little, little legs. Octo coral. I guess you could be right. He used his Captivate, his Samsung Galaxy S Captivate, to take this picture, which I have to say, amazing job, Josh. He is a reef enthusiast, and he's got his own reef tank, and he's got reefs in his house. And this I would is, like. This is what a picture. I would like reefs in my house. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's it's what very a lovely purple. I mean, it's a very nice composition. ADISO. He took this at ADISO. So he had quite a lot of light. Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. quite a lot of light. Well, there's a lot. I mean, when you have those bright coral reefs and those nano reefs and stuff, you got a lot of incandescent light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make sure everything has a lot of light. Mm -hmm. For to, to survive. Yeah, of course. All right. To live. Your octo coral. Well, so, Josh, thank you thanks for, for submitting that this in. gorgeous picture. You are the second inductee into the Museum of Mobile Art, and we yep. thank you for that. Yep. If you want to submit a gorgeous picture or something really cool that you saw on the streets, like today, Mike and I were driving down the street, and we saw none other than a pink, unmentionable sex thing. Well, I don't know. Can you? What is the rule I on guess. this? It was a big pink <laughs> dildo in the, in the <laughs> middle of the, 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 in the middle of the road. Laying in the middle of the intersection at Sawtell and Olympic. It's not every day, and I bet no one out there has ever actually seen a big pink thing laying like that on the street. No, I don't think so either. But if you, let's get back to the topic at hand here. If you have a picture of anything cool that you're checking out or whatever, please don't send us a picture of your dildo or your any kind of unmentionable any found bathing suit areas. <laughs> Let's just stay away from any bathing suit areas or anything that has to do with bathing suit areas. Mm -hmm. You can submit to the Techfoolery Show at gmail.com or you can go to our website, techfoolery.tv, and submit. And we also take doodles in any mobile, uh, we take art from oh, any art. mobile app. <laughs> so, like uh, doodles in, like, uh, you know. You said duties. No. God. We don't accept duties. No, we do not accept duties. Doodles. You said duties. I did. It's my duty to say duty. Mike, that's the end of the show. Nope. Yes. Okay, if you say so. It is the end. I'm so sad. Every time it ends, it feels like it went by too quickly. I, perhaps we should just I, keep talking and talking. Yeah, it's the end of the show, and Mike and I cannot help but encourage you to share the show with your friends. Like us on Twitter, yeah. at TechFoolery. Uh, you know. If you want to. I mean, if they want if to, like they're going to be self-motivated, whether we yeah. tell them to or not. They'll that's do it. true. You know. Please, uh, if please we do If we could it. pay you, we would, but we can't, so, um, We can only yeah. pay you with our time and our... Time, and energy, yeah. and love of you guys and technology. Mm. So, but yeah, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash techfoolery. I mean, we're pretty much everywhere under techfoolery, except for techfoolery.com, which is some coder's website that I tried to get off of him and he said no. So, forget that guy. Techfoolery.tv is the site. Go check it out. We have a new poster up. Oh, we yeah. Mike as robots. Yeah, we, we are, designed our own we robots. Did. We designed our own little robots, and they make this great little poster. And we made a little poster. So go check it out. Yeah. Tell us what you think, and uh, you know, keep in touch with us. Email us. Tell us what you think about the show. If you have comments, suggestions, whatever. Mm. As always, as is tradition on Tech Foolery, huh? we have our independent consumer electronic or whatever the hell it is. Independent consumer technology uh, advertisement, advertisement retrospective. retrospective. Basically, it's, it's, an old, it's an old retro ad that we like to close the show yeah, with. Yeah, basically, in a nutshell, it's old retro ads that are cool. So we're going to close the show. On behalf of everybody here at Tech Foolery TV, which is just the two of us, I'm Ashley Eskema. I'm Mike Hobbs. And that's been Tech Foolery. We'll see you in a fortnight. Enjoy. Johnny. He's going to play Simon. Nobody beats Simon. Simon. Simon is the challenge you've been waiting for because it takes coordination of hand and mind just to play the game. And if you get very good at Simon, great rewards await you. Thank you, Simon. Simon is waiting for you.
from Milton Bradley.